Medical school is a journey full of constant learning, and throughout this journey there are a few mistakes that I've made, things that may have led me to be a more productive individual and perhaps even enjoy medical school more than I already did. And as Warren Buffett said, it's good to learn from your own mistakes, it's even better to learn from other people's mistakes. So hopefully there is something that you can take away from this video and apply it to yourselves to avoid making the same mistakes that I did in medical school. Hi, my name's Devin, I'm a fourth year medical student at Imperial College London. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I make videos about student lifestyle, medicine and tech. And so if any of that interests you, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. So the first mistake would be not utilising lectures efficiently. Throughout the years, I've found out that lectures are literally the holy bible of exams. The lecturers are probably the ones that are writing the exam, and guess what? They're going to write the exam based on the lectures that they wrote. It's really simple, but it's definitely something that I didn't really fully understand until I saw the consequences of not paying the full attention to it. It's well and good using other resources like Anki, Brainscape, YouTube, Osmosis, but never ignore the actual lecture itself. And if your lecturer shows you a diagram in the lecture, especially if it's anatomy, then, then, then definitely learn it because that diagram could turn up as a 10 marker. Just labelling it. RIP. Also, if you're running out of time, you left revision till too late, make sure you focus more on the bigger topics like RESP, Cardio, GI, and maybe pay less attention to things like Psych, or musculoskeletal or heme. Now obviously this varies depending on what your syllabus is. Don't waste your time, make sure you prioritise the bigger lectures first because the weighting of the exam is most likely going to favour those bigger topics. Next up is not making the most out of social opportunities. Going into university I saw it as a perfect opportunity to try and lose some weight and seeing as I lived about two minutes away from the gym and I had a roommate who was also keen to go to the gym, it was highly motivating. Therefore, I went to the gym about six or seven times a week, I had this full diet plan and I managed to lose about 10 kilos. But I feel like looking back, I may have been overtraining quite a bit because I got to the stage where it wasn't only impacting my sleep, but it was also impacting my social life, going to events or societies, parties and all that. I prefer just staying in my room. Obviously, I don't regret paying all this attention to my health and fitness. Being healthy and confident in your own body is something that I think everyone should strive for. But I don't think that it should get to the point where you have to decide between the two. Whereas you decide if you want to be healthy or you, you want to go out and have fun and all that. I think there's a place where you can strike a healthy balance between the two and I feel like this is something that I didn't do during um, the first half of year one at least. At university your time is very limited and soon it's going to get very challenging and then you're going to graduate and it's going to get even more tough so you need to make the most use of these kind of social opportunities. Now obviously if that's not your vibe then, then don't do that, you do you do whatever you have fun with. By the way, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, I would appreciate it if you could drop a like down below and let me know that you're loving it. Next up is not revising efficiently. We've all learned from a certain individual that techniques such as active recall and space repetition are great ways of learning, but these are all primarily sort of individual based learning techniques. But I've been seeing a recent explosion in study with me videos and it got me thinking, why do people find them so useful watching them for hours and hours? The first reason is increased motivation. When you're working on your own, it's very easy to just have a quick glance at your phone and that one minute check soon turns into five minutes, an hour and then a day, you end up not doing much work. But when you have someone there and you see them working, it's just more motivating and it encourages you to try and study harder to keep up with them. Number two is that it gets you into the habit of studying longer. And number three, studying is usually quite lonely and boring. So just seeing someone there, you feel more connected to them and you're just, um, you realize that everyone's in the same boat as you. And that's why I'm super excited to tell you guys about this platform that I've been using called Binder, which has helped me increase my productivity. It's completely free and it only takes a few seconds to sign up. And it allows you to do three main things. Number one, study around a specific subject, discuss and answer questions. Number two, it allows you to do live study with me sessions and as I explained before how useful they can be in your learning. And number three, find like-minded people and discuss around a specific topic and ask questions. In my use of Binder, there's been three main sort of personal benefits that I've seen. Number one would be, remember I said earlier on how it's quite motivating seeing one person study um, in YouTube. Now imagine you're seeing 10 people study, wouldn't that be more motivating? The second thing is, even though 
um, Binder allows you to do private study sessions with your friends and all that. When you're with your friends, you tend to want to chat, socialize, and it's not always the most productive. And that's why it can be super useful to join random study sessions. In Binder on the home screen, you can join a random study session really easily. It only takes one click. The third thing I've found that is in a lot of study with me videos, you're not obliged to be there. You know, you don't have your camera on, you can leave whenever. There's nothing really keeping you there. It's really up to you if you want to stay, you can leave whenever you want. But um, the way I've seen Binder solve this is I'm going to use the theory of uh, consistency, one of the principles of persuasion. People like to be consistent with something that they've previously said or done. So in Binder, simply by clicking sign up to a session and adding it to a calendar and seeing your name there just makes you more likely to turn up in the first place and stay there for the full course because you feel like you made a commitment and you have to follow through and other people are watching you, they're expecting you to be there. Also by having your camera on and other people seeing you there is again going to make you more likely to commit to it and stay the full course, resulting in more productivity and more motivation. So in this journey of being more motivated and productive, I'm going to be creating a live silent study with me session scheduled for Sunday the 7th of February from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. I'm going to post the link to this in the description down below. So sign up to the session and mark it in your calendar and I hope to see you guys there. Next up is not joining another society. Medical school requires years of hard work and determination. Most likely volunteering and A-levels took priority over your hobbies and interests in order to get into medical school. And then when you got into medical school, the big change in workload probably stressed you out quite a bit and got you working. And again, not being able to explore your interests and hobbies. It can really negatively impact your mental health. And that's why it's crucial that you do some kind of club or society. That's how I believe you can stay mentally fit. It doesn't have to be a sport, it can be anything that takes your mind off work. So I joined Badminton Society and I went there without fail once a week. But during Freshers' Fair, I saw that there were loads of other societies I was interested in, like uh, Magic Society, Pool, uh, Dancing, but I didn't even bother going to the Taster Session. And the thing is, clubs and societies are one of the best places to meet like-minded people, um, people that have similar interests to you, and it's a great way to sort of make new friends. So I think if I had the opportunity to, I would go back and trial out more societies. The fifth thing would be not making the most use out of dissections. Anatomy is one of the fundamentals of medicine, and I feel like there's only so much that you can learn from just looking at a textbook. Sometimes you just have to get your hands stuck in and get down and dirty, and that's where you actually learn. You just take in more knowledge and you're more likely to retain it for a longer period of time. You get a body between 10 people, and slowly over the two years, you work your way through the body and explore the different structures. And because, you know, it's about 10 people, not everyone gets stuck in because it's just too many and it's you know, it's not possible. Um, so it's very easy to just take a step back and just observe. I feel like this is not something that I'll have the opportunity to, to do in the future. And so I feel like if I was to go back and do the anatomy course again, I would like to be one of the people that take charge and want to get stuck in. And that's been it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below and let me know that you loved it. With that said, I've been Devify. And I'm out.